So I'm very um, honoured to be um, presenting in this session, which I was asked to do last week, um, and to present um, the planned Huntington lowering study. And before I start, I just want to say that I'm presenting this on behalf of many people who've been working on this for over 10 years. Many people at CHDI, including Doug McDonald, who's been pivotal in the development, and many preclinical scientists at CHDI. The clinical side at CHDI with expertise from Christina and Beth, and an enormous amount of effort from ISIS and Roche. So I'm presenting what is an enormous body of people and work um, to get to this important stage. So we know that Huntington lowering and multiple models is beneficial, and there's going to be a session on this tomorrow, and I'm not going to go into it in detail. But we know that mutant Huntington is the target, and we know that lowering it is beneficial. So the preclinical <laughs> pharmacology summary so Huntington ASOs are well tolerated when administered systemically in mice. ISIS has, has identified several Huntington ASOs that are well tolerated when administered centrally into mice for up to one year after dosing. We know that these Huntington ASOs improve motor function, hypoactivity, and stress responses in the back HD mice. They improve motor function in the YAK128 mice, and they preserve striatal volume and increase survival in the R62. And Carl Johnson um, coined this term, and Don Cleveland's used it, and uh, Michael Hayden has used it. Many people, I think it's a great term. The term of a Huntington holiday. And that's the suggestion that neural recovery will take place even when Huntington is that ASOs are admi administered intermittently. And that's from rodent data, preclinical rodent data. And the reason I was focusing on that graph yesterday of understanding the biology of neuronal dysfunction and the biology of loss of circuitry and connectivity is because we hope that restoring that connectivity and circuitry will be part of that uh, recovery process during the Huntington holiday. So the characteristics of the lead compound, and this is uh, about the 20th and the most up-to-date version. This is Isis Huntington RX. This is the lead drug. It's a human Huntington targeted antisense targeting total Huntington. It's got a complex backbone and the chemistry of this, of this ASO is the most advanced chemistry. And I'm going to show you some data where it's been used in a number of clinical trials already. It's administered by a lumbar intrathecal slow push bolus, which is very similar to the way that you give intrathecal chemotherapy agents in oncology treatments. The onset of action is about four to six weeks, and the duration of action is about four months. So it is, it's not irreversible like many other um, potential uh, approaches that are being developed. The action is for four months, but that allows you to have intermittent dosing. And it's targeting a 50% reduction in the cortex. And we know from William Yang's recent data in the Nature Medicine paper in animal models that targeting mutant Huntington in the cortex may be beneficial in terms of restoring function it may be important in restoring function in the striatum and helping restore that connectivity and circuitry. It doesn't reach the striatum, but in the rodent data, some neurons do stain positive. So the characteristics, an enormous amount of tox data has been done to get to this stage. It's well tolerated in mice, rats, dogs, and non-human primates. They've done pharmacokinetic studies and uh, PD studies looking at Huntington expression in dogs following intrathecal administration. And it's currently in its IND enabling toxicology studies. And the clinical studies are planned to start in 2015. The design and protocol is subject of a lot of work and, and intense discussions. And it's a phase one, first into human, phase 2A, safety and tolerability study. It's all about safety. And there will be some exploratory endpoints. 
So intrathecal ASO delivery to the CNS is well established in CNS diseases. It's a lumbar punch of bolus injection, and it's, there is a precedence for this, and there, in many hospitals there are guidelines for this. It is the commonest way that many chemotherapy agents are given in, in oncology. So it's well established. It's also commonly used for anesthetics and pain medications, but the oncology field has really led the way with intrathecal administration of substances. Because the ASOs have long half-lives in CNS tissue with a long duration of action, this enables us to have infrequent dosing. So current plans for dosing in the first Interman study is once a month. For more frequent dosing, if that's needed in the future, there are implantable devices that can be used. So there is a growing clinical experience with intrathecal dosed ASOs for neurological indications. And the most important one of this is the uh, spinal muscular atrophy study, which, I, which ISIS have been doing for many years. And I have um, uh, been uh, discussing this with a number of PIs who've been running the study um, in children in London. So this is their ISIS SMN uh, ASO that's upregulating the survival motor neuron uh, mRNA and protein for children with spinal muscular atrophy. And some of the children have been on this drug for over two and a half years. They've completed phase one. It's currently conducting phase two in type one SMA and also now conducting phase two in type two and type three SMA children. And the phase three study in type one, which is the most severe form of SMA, has just been initiated. The chemical backbone of the ASO for the Huntington study is the same as the most advanced chemical backbone in the SMA study. And that's important because an enormous amount of work and data now lets us know about the chemistry of that backbone. The, IS, the ISIS SMN treatment has been well tolerated when given up to multiple doses, up to 12 milligrams, and there's been no safety or tolerability adverse events identified. And they have un undertaken detailed CSF chemistry, detailed CSF cellular analysis, and detailed CSF cytokines, and there were no inflammatory reactions, which I think is uh, very important and promising. It's demonstrated target engagement in the patients, and the PK is consistent with the prediction that they did from non-human primates, which is important for the work going into Huntington's disease. They have also done a SOD1 targeted uh, familial ALS study that was run by Merit Kudovich in the US, and they completed that with no drug-related adverse events, and that's moving forward to a phase two. So I just wanted to show you this um, uh, unpublished data. So one child in the SMA study, one infant died, unrelated to the study. And autopsy material was obtained from this child. And this child had received three doses of drug, 12 milligrams, on study days 1, 15, and 85. And they performed the autopsy on day 163. And in fact, this child had actually, their motor function had improved so much that they had become able to sit up. And what happened then is because they still had significant neck weakness, the child actually had a respiratory, um, pro a respiratory problem that caused them to um, die. Unrelated to the study, and actually it's because their motor function had improved and they had ne neck weakness and were unable to hold their head up. So it, it's a, a tragic for that individual, but important immunohistochemistry data and informing the study. So this infant was given intrathecal dosing of the SMN for a ASO, and they did very detailed histology on the brain of the child. And as you can see here in the cortex, this is labeling of the ASO in the cortex, and what they found very clearly with intrathecal dosing they were very clearly able to see the ASO had reached deep into the cortex. So I think, that was, I think that's important. I think it tells us that how much can target into the cortex. 
So ISIS have identified a Huntington mRNA targeting ASO for clinical development that treats 100% of patients. It's currently in IND enabling TOX studies, and the clinical studies are planned for the first half of 2015. I want to emphasize this is a phase 1-2A, which is focusing completely on safety and tolerability. It's a very important study, and we want to make it the safest and the most carefully run study, and we will do that. It has exploratory endpoints, but these are exploratory endpoints only, as Beth alluded to yesterday, and Doug McDonald is going to talk further on some of these exploratory endpoints in his talk tomorrow. Data has showed that targeting mutant Huntington is important. It successfully reverses the symptoms of Huntington's disease in mice, and there are follow-up studies ongoing for allele selective strategies that have been identified. Thank you.